Welcome to a Wednesday night Bible study, Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. Our teachers tonight, Reverend Lance Pence, Reverend Terry Reblin, and Reverend Renee Wilson. Bible study. Thank you. I want to thank our pastors for this opportunity. The title of our Bible study is A Call for Boldness. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. Yes. Uh, so God has been dealing with each of us individually that this year in that reset, we are being called to step into boldness, boldness like never before. We were given Proverbs 28, 1. It says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Mm. We are being called to step into boldness and step into situations as a lion would be as he came, as he goes and attacks and as he pursues his prey. As we pursue and step out to pursue the world for God, we need to be as bold as a lion. Mm. As pride showing who we are in Christ, as a lion would be as in his pride. Deuteronomy 31.6 tells us, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. It's, it's all like a command. It's a command. Be not. I mean, be strong and of good fruit. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. Why? Because he's going to... He's going to be with us. That's the key to, one of the biggest keys to our boldness. Boldness would be equivalent, of course, to strong and good courage. And I looked up the opposite of boldness would be timidity. The Holy Ghost gives us boldness. Acts 4.31 And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of, the, of God with boldness. And 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. I found a quote while I was studying for this that I really liked. It's from an uh, article, site Desiring God. Boldness in the biblical sense is not a personality trait. A typically soft-spoken, introverted person, which we have a lot of them here, Amen. can be bold at a time when a typically driven, outspoken, brash person shrinks back. Boldness is acting by the power of the Holy Ghost on an urgent conviction in the face of some threat. So in this year of Net Reset, we are reaching out to those who may not know the Lord or have salvation or have, maybe they just, they know the Lord, they need baptism or to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's important that we cultivate boldness as we witness. The word commands us to share what we have received. In Matthew twenty-eight nineteen through 20, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. All Jesus, by the way. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so he is with us as we go boldly and speak to people and witness about him and salvation. And maybe they already have that, but they need to receive the Holy Ghost. He is with us always. And we rejoice that Christ died for our sins and made us righteous and gave us grace, that undeserved kindness. We need to be ready to communicate this to others with boldness. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, which is a way of stating that we use boldness when we speak to people. And Acts 28, 31 states, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So we need to have confidence and boldness when we're approaching people. 
Amen. And when we think of boldness, it's not being decently and out of order. It's not someone disrupting the right. atmosphere. Yep, right. that's we right. We have to do everything to excellently. We have to ask God for his direction and boldness. That quote said that it's when the urgent conviction is given. There's going to be opportunities when we're going out and witnessing that we have to use the boldness to speak up and speak our mind, but it's not disrupting the conversation it's not taking it over it's having the courage and the knowledge of knowing who you are what you know and saying i have the answer for you i may just like what paul said when the beggar was outside the gates silver and gold have i none but Uh that i have let me give to you that was the boldness that they showed showing i may have nothing that you're asking for Mm -hmm. But here's what I have, and I'm bold enough to share it and proclaim it to you. Sister Terry just read Matthew, and it's echoed in Mark, which says, Mark 16, 15, it said, And he said unto them, him being Jesus, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. The word, or the phrase, go ye, means pursue. And the word preach means proclaim. So if we take a look at this verse, it says, pursue the world and proclaim the gospel to everyone. To pursue is to have an intent, to have an unction and a desire to take over. We know the world is taken, run by Satan, but we have to pursue those that are, we're given the unction to save with everything we have, to share what we know, to witness to him everything that we have. We see that in 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 2 through 4 as well. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain, but even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Mm -hmm. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. Mm -hmm. It's not for you. It's not for the men. It's for that soul that God created and has a plan for and has a purpose for. It's not for that person. We love to quote that, oh, we're not battling against the flesh. This is exactly right. Having that boldness to know it's not that person, that flesh of that person. It may be a beggar on the street. It may be someone that willfully entreated you. And God's going to say, speak to that person, witness to that person. I want them. I called them for you. I created this moment and opened that door to allow you to show me. I love to see that our children, our children are the truest refraction of God's love. Uh They love everybody. They might be timid at first, but they have that boldness of, hey, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And that's exactly what God's calling us to. Mm-hmm. But it's also, they're also a refraction of the love that their parents show. They, you see the kindness, everything that you teach them, they're like sponges. So if you're giving them vile, then they're going to give back vile. But if you're giving them love, if you're giving them Jesus, you walk up to any one of our kids, they say, amen. They say, hallelujah. They were in the back tearing up and praising on Sunday more than anybody else in the church. So they are, that's what we have to strive to do. Amen. Amen. If Jackson was out here, he'd probably say the same thing. Uh, But that's exactly... (laughs) <laughs> yes, Hosanna, absolutely. But you see that, and that's exactly what God wants us to be, is as bold as children. We're called to be like children, but that's the boldness that we also need to step in as well when we're speaking God's word and proclaiming it in witness. So 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 15 states, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear and and hope and meekness in the scripture it doesn't mean timidity Mm -hmm. 
according to Strong's, it means gentleness of spirit. So we can be bold and still communicate the message with meekness. I mean, we know salvation in depth, but we also have access to new revelation to communicate to those in our community who may be confused about their salvation and their place in the kingdom of God and whether they belong there or whether they have salvation. And the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance what to say, but as we have stated many times recently, you got to know what what is in the word to have it brought to your remembrance, to be able to communicate it to people when you're witnessing to them. So that's an important part of being able to witness is to know, you know the word and you know what you, you have to say and the Holy Ghost can bring it to your remembrance. And Ephesians chapter three, verses nine through 12 says, Sorry. <laughs> the show stealer just gave it. Sorry. Totally. <laughs> and and make all men to see what is the fellowship of the mystery from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness yes. and yes. access with confidence by the faith of him. <clears throat> so we need, we have access to some of those mysteries. We have revelation. So we can use that when we witness to other people. And uh, I, I was on uh, the two outreaches that we had recently, and I learned a lot about boldness when we were on outreach. Yes. At first, I was a little hesitant, um, especially those of us who Lance already said were introverts, because a lot of us are. But as we practice that, and we create that muscle memory or whatever you want to call it uh, to speak to people, we'll learn how to speak to others with Holy Ghost boldness. Amen. And when we think about witnessing, we, we hope that it's all going to be happiness and rainbows and you're not going to come against anything, which is not going to be the experience. You're always going to come against some sort of pushback, some sort of trial. And God... <laughs> Sorry. And God wants us to know that that's when he's had the promise of boldness in those actions as well. That he's also our protection, but he's also our boldness. Um, in Acts 4, verses 29 and 30, we see that promise. It says, And now, Lord, behold thy their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants with all boldness that they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. When we see that, here's that promise, is that there's going to be threatenings. There's going to be an adversary that you're going to come against. But allowing God and assuring God that you are there for the right purpose, you've prayed up you've and you're asking God to take over it's not about you it's not about where you're coming from it's speaking his word all right speaking his word because our words may fail but God's word says that they're never going to turn unto him void so at, when you are in that situation God's going to give you that boldness to speak his word to bring into your his your remembrance just as sister Terry said So we just wanted to cover some examples of how we can follow Jesus and his disciples, how they witnessed. And, and I wanted to just briefly, maybe not so briefly, cover witnessing to the Samaritan woman at the well, because that was a unique experience. And it, result, it, had, a lot, it had a lot of results for a lot of people to come to the Lord. So John 4, 5 through 10 says, reads then cometh he to a city of samaria which is called sikar near to the parcel of ground that jacob gave his son joseph 
Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me a drink, thou wouldst have asked thou wouldst have asked unto him and he would have given thee living water so there was enmity between the jews and the samaritans but jesus had absolutely no reluctance in approaching the samaritan woman and our fish may not always be people that we are most attracted to yeah. and 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 are sometimes they're not easy to approach but you don't know the result of the, what the result of the encounter may be. Jesus' interaction with the Samaritan woman resulted in her witnessing to many others. So you don't know if maybe you speak to someone who's homeless or you speak to someone who looks unapproachable, if that may result and have a domino effect and allow others to come to Jesus. And this was evidence in John chapter 4, verses 28 through 30. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. And it continues in verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are ready for harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into the labors. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him. And that was her harvest for her witnessing, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there for two days. So the result of his interaction with one woman who Jews would not normally have an interaction with brought many to salvation. So as we reach out, we have no way of knowing what the ultimate result will be and maybe approaching that person who doesn't seem approachable or is not someone we really would like to approach could have so many results down the line. Yes. I was thinking after the uh, Easter production and uh, Nate's part of Peter got me to thinking. Um, Boldness in the Cambridge Dictionary is defined as a brave and confident way of behaving that shows no fear. And the story is recorded both in Luke and John that help us know who it was that wielded the sword. In Luke 22, 49 through 51, it says, When they were about him, sorry, excuse me, when they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite him, smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. And if we jump over to John 18, verses 10 and 11, it's also revisiting that story. And it tells who it is. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. And Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Kind of got me to thinking, can we try to be bold for God and still do the wrong things? Yes. If you think about everything, the different things in the Bible, some are accounts, some uh-huh. are te- you know, teaching us principles. All I found in this account of this story was Peter got bold and whacked somebody's ear off. 
They, they told a story. Okay, God, I'll put it back on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he did. So what we see here, Peter, thinking he was being bold, thinking he was standing up for God, actually was acting in wickedness. He was doing what was right in his own eyes. Yeah. All yeah, right. So how many times do we act impetuously? And I looked in Webster. Is Webster meaning imp- marked by impulsive vehemence? Or passion and vehemence is intensity. He was pretty intense to yeah. cut off yes. the deer. Yeah. Thinking we are doing something for God, only for Him to have to come in and clean up our mess afterwards. Yeah. How many people who truly do love God, and we've all known them, are vehement with intensity and a passion, are wielding a sword, and God's having to come behind them and clean messes and heal hearts Oops. and put things back together. Well. Because they left messes in their wakes. Mm -hmm. And something hit so hard. I've like underlined it and put stars (laughs) and everything. So you can write this down because it was really, I thought it was really good. God, thank you. All right. In all that account of Peter taking that ear off, what was there to learn from that? And I realized what it was. Is it possible that had Peter spent time praying in the garden Mm -hmm. alongside Jesus with the same intensity and passion, instead of sleeping, perhaps his reaction would have been more in alignment with the will of Jesus at that pivotal moment of the garden. So if the account, I think that's what we were to learn from the account. Spent some time praying instead of sleeping, and you'll know how to handle those situations when they happen. So we all want everyone to come to salvation, and God wants everyone to come to salvation but this is what Jesus commanded when he sent the apostles to preach to the lost sheep of Israel it's Matthew chapter 10 verses 11 through 15 and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter inquire who in it is worthy and there abide till ye go thence and when you come into an house salute it and if the house be worthy let your peace come upon it. But if it not be worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake, off, shake the dust off of your feet. Yeah. So, though we must witness boldly, we need to understand and not be disappointed, because some people aren't our fish. Yeah. We need to realize it and shake, shake the dust off our feet. When we encounter those who aren't receptive, to God's word and we an outreach we recently went to a first Friday event and realized that was not our fishing pond (laughs) but we still sowed seeds and there may still be something that comes out of it but we need to not we need not to be disappointed disappointed or discouraged if somebody doesn't receive what we have to say we're we're sowing the seeds but the harvest is the Lord's. Because the, the word says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So our work is planting the seeds, and the results are in Jesus' hands, and it's up to him. Um, I'm going to make reference in First Thessalonians 5, verses 6 and 17. And backstory, Paul is writing to the church in Thessalonica, which and it was a prominent city of Macedonia, which is modern day Greece. And Paul and Silas traveled to Thessalonica from Philippi on P- Phil- Paul's second missionary journey to preach the news about Jesus. He spent three weeks teaching in the Jewish synagogue, but most of the S- Thessalonian Jews became indignant and formed a mob to drive the men out of the city. You got to be bold when you're facing stuff like that. <laughs> Amen. However, some of the Jews were perce- persuaded to join Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women, and that's referenced in Acts 17:4. This was the beginning of the church in Thessalonica. We're going to come up against opposition. We're going to get, you know, mobs want to drive us out. If not, you know, a person may feel like a mob at that moment. But in this pa- chapter, Paul was speaking about the suddenness of Christ's coming. This is the time we need to be bold. Christ is coming. We yeah. can't be wimpy about it. We can't be timid. This is our mail. 
1 Thessalonians 5, verses 6 and 17. Therefore, let us not sleep, kind of like Peter was doing, <laughs> as do others, but let us watch and be sober. 17 says, pray without ceasing. Yes. We cannot afford, especially now, to have our boldness out of alignment with the will of God. Mm -hmm. The only way to keep ourselves in check is a heart and attitude of ceaseless prayer and time spent in the Word so we can be sensitive <coughs> to the discernment of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when we think about boldness in prayer, there's a lot of power that God promises when you're bold, when you approach the throne with boldness. He created that gateway for us to boldly be able to do it, but God is asking us, are you actually doing it? Are you actually boldly approaching my throne and asking and believing everything that you're asking for? Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne yes. of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God's saying, I'm, I'm there. I'm ready and I'm willing and I want to. But God's saying, you have to come boldly. It's an action, like we said. It's not an immediate personality trait that someone's just bold. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we like to describe people as bold, uh -huh. but it's not necessarily their characteristic. It's something that is an action that they put on and, and, and acted upon. So God's asking us, boldly approach my throne in this situation. Before you enter in, boldly approach my throne so you're prepared and you're aligned to enter in and receive everything that I have for you. Everything I need you to do in that situation when you're witnessing, when you're speaking, when you're being in that conversation. We also see in Hebrews 10 verses 19 that says, Therefore, brethren, boldness, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You have to have bold attraction, bold intentions in order to enter into the blood that God, mm. that Jesus shed for us. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of things that we can do, just like what um, Brother Lance said, is that if you aren't aligned with God's will, you're not doing it. That's right. If you're doing what you think is right in your own eye, mm -hmm. and you're being bold saying, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do, uh -oh. and I'm, I haven't really aligned myself with them, I'm doing boldness in my own right. Uh -huh. I'm not aligned under the blood. I don't have that power. I don't have that connection with God to actually get the results that, that God intended it to mm -hmm. be. You can have all the boldness in the world, and you, and you say, oh, I'm preparing for that conversation, and then when you get into it, it's a crash and burn halt because you were bold in your own right, and nothing <sighs> got done. You actually created more harm than good. And God had to go back in and either send someone else or you had to go back with, with the 12, your tail between your legs and try to <laughs> rectify that situation. Yeah. How often have you done that where you reacted uh -oh. in a way that was bold and then you had to go back and be like, I am so sorry. I overreacted. That was my boldness coming through that situation and not God's. God is that calm delight. Yeah. God mm -hmm. is that calm delight. And that's when that boldness comes in. We had that whole year of joy where it was pervasive, <laughs> prevailing, preeminent. That's the bold that God is asking us to, is that calm delight in those situations, yeah. knowing and rest assuring and having that assurance, knowing God's got it. Yeah. I have that boldness knowing the end result is victory. Yes. And I'm just a vessel used to proclaim it, to pursue that person for God's intentions, not my own. Amen. And we see in John, 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15, we have that confidence in God. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. And Amen. if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. It's all, it's all rest assured on him. We have to know that we can boldly come before him, having the confidence to do so and ask according to his will. If you're boldly approaching the situation outside of God's will, nothing's going to be done. You can ask a million times. Sister Jasmine has preached on it all the time, saying, I would just sit there and ask for whatever I needed, but instead, of, until I align myself, yeah. nothing gets done. That's right. And then as you spend that time with him, your will aligns with him. And then you think everything is exactly what you wanted. You may not have the, right, the original intentions, but everything you get is what you wanted. Another character that I um, studied about, thank you, Howard, was Paul after Easter. 
Paul really thought he was doing the will of God. He mean he really thought he was doing the will of God. Acts 22, verses 3 through 5. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, city in, a city in Cilicia, that yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. You're going to have to pronounce that for me later. Gamaliel. <laughs> And taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous towards God, as ye all are to this day. And I persecuted this way unto death, binding and delivering un into prisons both men and women. He really thought he was doing God's will here, though. Mm -hmm. As also the high priest doth, doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, for whom I received the letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus, to bring them which were bound to Jerusalem for to be punished. And then jump backwards, Acts 9, verses 1 and 2. And Saul, before he became Paul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went up to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And I was thought of what a parallel this is today. Again, there are many people that do love the Lord. They, they've given their hearts to him that truly believe they are standing in godly boldness against the eunuch nation. Yeah. They're persecuting. They're threatening. Yeah. They're using intimidation. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Sometimes it's as simple as passive aggressiveness, but it's a way to... They're using a boldness, and I use air quotes... But in reality, it's their own bold agenda, and that's exactly like Paul was doing back then. Our boldness needs serious time of seeking the face of God to know that we, whether we are boldly proclaiming Him or an agenda that's not Him at all. Wouldn't we rather put in the time to check our motives and pray for boldness that is Holy Ghost given and inspired rather than get knocked to the ground and blinded to learn a lesson that God needs us to learn before he can even use us. Right. Amen. All right. And we can see great examples of this type of boldness in the Bible. There's the story of the three Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel 3. We have the story of Daniel and King Darius in the lion's den, where he made the law, he had to follow through with it, but he knew the boldness that God had, and he knew the promise that God had with David to, to deliver him out of that situation. And David boldly went in and, and took what he, the punishment that was given to him. Mm -hmm. He didn't know the outcome, but he knew that God would deliver him. Yeah. And he knew all of the stories of everybody in the past that stepped out into boldness and, and received that victory right. when it was aligned with God. We also have the story before... Daniel's beginning or David's beginnings um, with David and Goliath. He had the boldness of God to go out and fight. He was the smallest and the meekest of them all, just delivering lunch to his older brothers and saying, I, I'm no one else is doing it. God, I'll step up. I'll step up. Sling with a sling and a stone. That's that's all that took. We need to have this type of boldness. We need to listen and align ourselves to God's will to run and stand strong when faced with that adversity and understand what truly is the will of God in these situations. Are there times that we have to basically psych ourselves up into boldness? Yeah, yeah. and no. Um, our spirit wants to be bold. How many here? I mean, we want to be bold in the spirit. I mean, that's our cry. And our, I mean, I don't think everybody's hand. But our flesh also wants to be bold because it wants to run the show. It wants to do it his way. So there's this battle that is ongoing. Who's going to win the right to be the boldness and to be acted upon? Romans 7, verses 15 through 20. For that which I allow not, for that... For what I would, that I do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, yeah. I consent unto the law that it is good. But then it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's a battle going on right here. For I know that is in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, 
But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. That's always been a tongue twister of a verse for it everybody. Is. But we... we <laughs> <laughs> now, if I do what I would not, it is no more that I do, but sin that dwell within me. Yeah. So, this fight, flesh over spirit... That's been going on for a really long time. This isn't new to us. This has been going on for a very long time. In the beginning of something, we, you know, the, when we're out to go to outreaches and stuff, mm-hmm. we may have to psych ourselves up, which is basically another term for dragging our flesh, kicking and screaming. Yeah, right. That's yeah. really what psyching yeah, up right. is. Right. To do yeah. something God asks us because we are fearful. We're <coughs> learning. You know, some of us learned a lot about ourselves on that outreach, just how yes. fearful we were. As we grow, though, we start to recognize his voice. We start recognizing that it's him making the requests and the assignments. And the boldness is going to come more naturally as we recognize his voice. So there's less psyching up. We can just basically, at this point, tell our flesh, shut up. We're going. You know, there's not going to be no kicking and screaming. We're going. Yeah. We know our master's voice. And that takes time to get to know him. John 10, 27 says... My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And as far as the psyching up, um, some of you all might have been here when I preached the sermon when I was talking about going on those high ropes. I had to psych up to do that. Mm -hmm. I really had to psych myself up. But when I realized I wasn't going to fall, I realized now I could go back to that same place. There would be no psyching up because I would have the confidence knowing I'm not going to fall. That's what I mean. The more you do something, the more you hear God's word, the more you know, yes. mm-hmm. the less psyching up it's going to take. You're going to know you can accomplish yes. that task when you go into it. Sometimes, though, there are places I've, my whole life has been spent in church where people's boldness that didn't require psyching at all was more like a shotgun. It was a false idea of boldness. And then afterward, they'd say, oh, it's just who I am. I just say it, it's like a blast, and it's over with. My great, my grandfather, who was Pioneer Pentecost, I, he was very blunt and to the point. He used to say, yep, and a shotgun blast, there's usually something dead or dying at the other end of it. Yes, yeah. that is true. So, we have to be sure we're in tune with the Holy Ghost before we speak. Maybe we do need a little bit of psyching up. Our flesh is going to fight it. So if our flesh is fighting it, maybe we know that's what we're supposed to do. If our flesh ain't fighting it and we just blast it out there, that kind of gives us an idea that it's not Holy Ghost inspired and we're going to hurt somebody. You better go on. Amen. And we see that in another aspect of it is that oftentimes when we step into these situations, it can be a life or death situation for that person, for that soul. We never know what tomorrow is going to hold. And we have to have that boldness to know we're also going to be called when we we're really focused on witnessing right now. But there's also going to be time when you're going to be called to that bedside ministry where the person is right then and there. That's life or death for that person. You don't know the past of that person. You may not ever know the past of that person. And that's that life or death situation where you have to know who you believe in and understand and have that boldness to enter into that situation, to enter in knowing who you have, what, who Jesus is and the power that he holds. We have to have that boldness to step into those life or death situations. Mm -hmm. Not many of us have had those opportunities, but they're coming. All right. God is opening the door and asking for boldness. There's going to be times where you have to go to the hospital. You have to go to those houses. And you have to be able to and be willing to step in and allow God to do that. Um, We can have a Joshua situation. We see that in Joshua 1 verses 1 through 9. (laughs) It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all his people, all this people, and unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. 
every place that that sole of thy foot shall tread upon, that I, that I have given unto you, as I say unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide and inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commandeth thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, and thou shalt meditate thereon day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For when thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success." Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whether soever thou goest. Amen. We're going to ca- be called to those situations where Pastor or Pastor Linda may not be the person that God is calling. And he's saying, rise up, go where I tell you to go, and have that boldness. Fear not. Be courageous. Have that boldness that I promised you because I'm going to be there wherever you go. Yes. Amen. It's going to be, there often be times where Sister Heidi has been in that situation where you're dealing with people that are not mentally stable, where you're not going to be there. But God's saying, be strong. Be courageous. Be very courageous in those situations because it's promised in his word you have that ability. Because that's our hope. Because that's what we live and die on, is the hope that we have in Jesus and the promises that we have. After this study, I firmly come to believe that people can recognize godly boldness versus fleshly boldness, even if they don't even know God, based on how we present. Our boldness comes with a calm delight. There's a confidence in godly boldness that attracts people as opposed the, to the brash boldness of the flesh that will ultimately drive them off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that uh, ties right in with meekness. You know, we, we don't approach people with that brashness. We approach them with kindness, and that is going to resonate with them if we approach them in that way. And uh, when I was studying, I got the same scripture Brainy did, which doesn't, happen I mean it happens very often but the wicked flee when no man pursueth but the righteous are bold as a lion and and that's Proverbs 28 1 but I want to go to Acts 4 13 now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men Mm -hmm. they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus yes you know what our background is doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter what matters is that you know jesus and study the word and have received the holy ghost and you're ready to just go out with boldness and witness or as Rene said minister in life or death situations there's a lot of ways we can minister but we minister with what we have learned from jesus it doesn't matter what our background was as people before we came to the Lord. Amen. And the only way that we're going to do this is with agape love. Yes. We've talked about fear. We've talked about courage. And 1 John 4 verses 17 and 18 says it perfectly. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because he, or as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out all fear. Because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We have to step out on the faith and have the fear in God, but not fear of that situation. We need to exercise our faith as reverence 
and enter in those situations with bold love, with bold love, a tenacity to love that outlast any physical comprehension. That agape love that doesn't matter how you're feeling. It's, a, it's an action. Yes. It's an action. Yes. Yeah. Boldness is an action. Yes. So we have to enact an action today uh-huh. to step out in bold love and, and have a boldness to love people no matter what. So it's time to realign and adjust our direction in our boldness. It's time to step into situations and be bold as lions and as meek with humility. It is time to boldly pursue the world and proclaim the gospel to everyone with love. Thank you, thank you, thank you.